Today we're going to discuss a very unique object right here in the Milky Way galaxy. An object referred to as SS433, one of the most exotic star systems ever seen. An object that's made out of two parts, a black hole and an A-type star. But more importantly, this is the only black hole known to us that's actually present inside a supernova remnant with a very well-known nebula, the one you see right here, surrounding this binary. Here's roughly what it might look like if we were to simulate this using Space Engine. And this is known as the Manatee Nebula, although more officially known as W50 or Westerhout 50. A beautiful nebula approximately 18,000 light years away from us that was very likely produced when a star went supernova turned into a black hole and left behind this beautiful remnant, with all this very likely happening approximately 20,000 years ago. And in general, these types of objects are usually known as the eclipsing X-ray binary systems, where we usually have some kind of a black hole or a neutron star with a partner that steals a lot of mass from the partner and feeds itself, producing all sorts of emissions, usually a lot of X-rays, which is why it's called X-ray binary, but quite often a lot of other frequencies as well. But of all of the systems out there, SS-433 has always been the most fascinating. It's also one of the few microquasars or basically tiny black hole systems that actually produce very similar emissions to a typical quasar, which is often in the middle of the galaxy, with the overall shape of the entire system sort of resembling something like this. And all of the emissions we're seeing from the system, just like with quasars, are essentially produced by extremely powerful and extremely hot accretion disks that often produce super powerful X-rays, but also, obviously, jets with the jets releasing material at very high velocities, possibly up to a quarter of the speed of light. So maybe not as fast as a central black hole in a galaxy, but still pretty fast. And because this is such a fascinating system, and also because it's so unique, for many years now, a lot of researchers were trying to focus on what exactly is happening here and how many of these emissions seem to be produced, but specifically focusing on the mystery of the cosmic rays. Because we know that, for some reason, this is one of the few regions out there in the galaxy that also seems to produce very powerful cosmic rays, or basically very, very powerful, fast-moving particles that then strike our planet at near the speed of light. But apart from X-rays, they also produce gamma rays, which is not something we usually see from these types of objects. And so essentially this is literally the most powerful X-ray binary in the entire Milky Way galaxy, but is also the only one still containing its original nebula. And that means a lot. There are approximately 400 known supernova remnants in the Milky Way, and only one of them contains a black hole. This one. I mean, it is possible that there are black holes in the other ones, they're just not visible and seem to be relatively quiet. But it's really the fact that this is also a cosmic ray source, which makes this object super mysterious and very unusual. Mostly because today we have no idea how cosmic rays are produced or where they're usually coming from. Now, one of the recent videos in the description describes some of these new discoveries in more detail, but we know that for the most part, they seem to come from many different quasars or many different super powerful black holes. But because they're so far away, it's impossible to tell how they're produced. Literally, all we're seeing is just this very bright blob. And this doesn't help much with explaining what's happening here. Because there's no physical explanation for how these particles are able to reach extremely high velocities. But because this is only 18,000 light years away from us, we can actually use modern telescopes to try to see what's happening from a much closer object. And so here's what we know about this so far, and also what some of the new studies revealed as well. First of all, as you can see, it produces an unusual corkscrew. It basically wobbles as it spins. And that's the main reason why this unusual Manatee Nebula looks so elongated and so distorted. The distortions in this case seem to come as a result of the pressure from the jets. And even though the black hole itself does not seem to be very massive, very likely less than 30 solar masses in total, it's still able to produce some of the most powerful emissions in the entire Milky Way. And that's very likely because of the partner. The partner here is an A-type star. And so as a result, it's basically just a very active donor. It allows the black hole to steal a lot of matter, and all of this matter is then re-emitted, with some of it converted into energy, producing very powerful emissions. And so not only is the partner star very large, it's also really close. A single orbit is approximately 13.8 days. But for a very long time, researchers knew that 
there is this unusual discontinuity that seems to be located just a little bit away from the black hole itself. And quite a lot of powerful emissions have been discovered at the end of the discontinuity, including very powerful gamma rays. Sometimes these are actually referred to as the earlobes, because I guess it does look like some kind of a face. And intriguingly, it was actually only in 2018 that some of the highest energy gamma rays were finally confirmed coming from the system. The source here is so powerful that it's even believed to produce what's known as pivotrons, or peta-electron volt cosmic ray, whose energy was absolutely ridiculous, much more powerful than anything we can produce on Earth. And though these have been discovered from other black hole and neutron star objects, SS-433 seems to be the most powerful. But how it's produced is a little bit unusual. Unlike previous explanations that essentially suggest some kind of a continuous acceleration of particles by various magnetic fields, the results here suggest something different. Here it seems to occur at the discontinuity. And there seem to be other gaps inside the jets, which are physically visible with modern telescopes. But intriguingly this jet did not exist forever. It might have existed for at least 50 years, but what's interesting about this object, for some reason this jet hasn't actually changed much in these five decades. And so because of this it actually presents us with a really interesting scientific study. We get to see how all of this changed in 50 years, and then try to pinpoint where some of the most powerful changes seem to occur. And so even though the spirals around the black hole seem to be visible up to about a third of a light year away from the system, all of this seems to disappear until the region about 80 light years away. And right at that region, we suddenly get these super powerful emissions in gamma rays, x-rays, and of course a lot of cosmic rays coming from this region as well. And more importantly, it seems to come from both directions, suggesting that this mechanism works the same on both sides. And so it's really this gap where the particles seem to be accelerated. Here is sort of what it looks like if you were to look at it with a telescope. But what exactly happens inside the gap is still maybe a little bit unclear, but there are at least three potential explanations. First, it could be because of magnetic lines around the black hole that snap so many times that they basically re-accelerate particles over and over. Second, maybe this black hole creates some kind of a tunnel-like shape, as you can see right here, that seems to stretch for these 80 light years, with these two ends essentially just being the exits for this tunnel. But in both of these cases, we would be actually seeing a lot of these particles accelerating faster and faster, and so having a discontinuity would be very difficult to explain. And so a much more likely explanation actually involves some kind of an invisible wall, very likely just a bunch of particles and a bunch of gas, at that distance of 80 light years. And so here this very sudden stop dramatically changes the speed of a lot of particles, making the energy build up so much that it re-accelerates a lot of particles around them, causing them to move faster and faster and faster until they reach these near light speeds at the end. And so here it's the process of re-energizing the jets and re-energizing the particles through some kind of a powerful interaction with a lot of particles in this region of the nebula. With all of this essentially just being driven by this binary system in the middle and affecting the entire nebula even at a distance of 100 light years away. And so that's how extremely powerful this unusual X-ray binary is. But that's of course just one explanation for now, or at least an explanation for this system. It's not entirely clear if this is the same process for a lot of larger black holes, or basically quasars, but chances are that with new investigations we might finally know in the next few years. But I guess at least for now there are maybe first hints on how some cosmic rays seem to be produced with these first answers coming from the famous SS-433. Maybe all of this is just a result of electrons hitting the shock front, which then forces them to accelerate to extremely high velocities. But once again, because this is such a unique system, I'm sure we'll be hearing more about it in the next few months. And so until these future discoveries, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support the show on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.